This Week in Movies, could, uh, could we be looking at the next big family hit in homes across the country with Raya and the Last Dragon? How about the return of the now King Akeem in Coming to America? Do we have another comedy classic on our hands? Well, here to answer those questions is our film critic, Rad. Rad, great to talk to you. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. How's it going? It's going well. Well, someone who loved Coming to America, which, by the way, I watched last weekend just to get ready for this weekend. If someone loved the original, uh, are they going to love the sequel? I think so, and not because the sequel is anywhere near as good as the original. But it's a bit like you're like you're you're reuniting with your like drunk uncle. You know, you know, you love his humor, but he's also kind of redundant and repetitive. And he makes, there's some eye roll moments, but you have a lot of affection for what he represents and what what this coming to America represents. Is, it's a celebration of the original because the original was such a big deal, right? We can't undermine how big a deal it was in 1988. I mean, the original was a shift in Eddie Murphy's career, like in movies like Beverly Hills Cop and Trading Places. He played like a fish out of water in white spaces but in coming to america he was a, a fish out of water in black spaces he was an african king who came into a, among african americans so you had this inward looking comedy that was also that had an all black cast and it was basically the first ever bl studio blockbuster with an all black cast that made like a hundred million dollars so that was like the black panther of its time and that's what we're celebrating here i mean this movie it feels very satisfied with just being a celebration it's it's basically like collecting all of this black talent from different generations so from eddie murphy and james earl jones to Leslie Jones and Tracy Morgan and, and a lot more like uh, Kiki Lane from Beale Street. And everyone's really here just having a good time in the way they might in an Adam Sandler movie. Um, so, you know, that could be kind of lazy, uh, not all that inventive, but then it's also fun. And, you know, if you're really excited to be around these people, especially after 33 years, yeah. you're going to be digging it. Uh, exactly. I just want to have fun. And this movie looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, all right. Who should see it? I mean, look. This is think of this as fan service in the way that uh, oh, we got we're, oh we're, we got the this is the this is for the next movie. So I'll just tell you yes. if you love movies like Barbershop Three or Bill and Ted Face the Music, kind of the fan service. Uh, there you go. Those three. You know, it's a, think of it as fan service with soul. That's who's gonna <laughs> love this movie. All right. Well, I think we we just gave it away a little bit because we're but we're moving on to uh, <laughs> Raya and the Last Dragon. Uh, this is a family yeah. movie coming out this weekend, a Disney one. So uh, who should see this one? Well, I mean, look, at this movie is, uh, for me, for anyone who, who felt disappointed by the last a animated Mulan, not an the live-action Mulan movie, like, if you want to get that out of your taste, I feel like Raya and the Last Dragon does that, because this is a movie, you know, very different stories, very different setting, but still captures the spirit of the original animated Mulan in the way that that live-action remake didn't. This is a movie about, you know, it's about Raya, is voiced by Kelly Marie Tran, who you might know from Star Wars, and she is a young warrior who is on a Lord of the Rings-style mission to get, uh, capture these five broken stones that have magic magical powers and she gets the help from a magical dragon who's voiced by Aquafina and right there between Kelly Marie Tran and and uh, Aquafina you have a lot of winning personality yep. carrying this movie cuz this is a movie that's better in moments rather than the whole the whole is a bit complicated with a big overwritten mythology it feels very committee written but the personalities the, the the fun action the beautiful animation and 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 a and a tiny little kung fu hustler baby that's enough <laughs> to get my kids kitty with it all right rad who should see this one so this is for going back to that same animation for the people who love Frozen and Onward, kind of like the big the big quest missions yeah. where the characters go on their tangents but have their cute personalities. Normally you would say Frozen Two or some direct to video <laughs> Frozen knockoff. I'm glad to see that you <laughs> liked it. Hey, we only have a yeah. quick, real quick a quick rundown of the Mauritanian. So Mauritanian, you saw that that movie, uh, Jodie Foster won a Golden Globe for Best Actress for the Mauritanian last week. Now, this is a movie that is about uh, her. Uh, she plays a, a lawyer trying to get a man who's in prison in Guantanamo Bay for being a suspected terrorist. Uh, for, and he's in prison without charge for uh, for a long, uh, for like decades, basically. Um, and it's a movie that feels a little dated because it feels like it would have come out 14 years ago. But the thing is, this man this is a true story and the man was actually only released recently. So it just shows that we are ourselves dated and we hadn't learned our lessons. So... Courtroom thriller for everyone with good acting. Looking forward to it. Hey, Rad, thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Thanks. See you then. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.